Yeah, I'm Kenton Dick, uh, joined by Scott Hellman. Uh, Scott, I don't know if you remember this. We, we, we chatted, I think, in November of 2021. This is right as you were moving to L.A. Yes. And you had just come out with Pretty, and there was a few things that we chatted about. Uh, first off, your move to L.A. How's that gone? Yeah, it's been awesome, man. The first year was tough. Um, honestly, it was just like you, when you go to a new place, it's really disorienting and um, I had been here enough that I knew I loved LA, but the thing about LA that's so hard is like, I think it's the kind of place where it's, it's all, it's all about the people you're with. Like, it's such a big place and it's so complicated and weird and uh, so unlike Canada. So, uh, but I feel like I finally kind of really found like an amazing group of friends and, and feel like it's my home now. So that's really cool. Really cool. Do you have to kind yeah. of start from scratch on that with the friends? I mean, <clears throat> I moved here uh, knowing like a decent amount of people, not a de like just enough people to make it a possibility in my mind. But to find, you know, those friends that like you can call at 2 a.m. and the friends that you can like um, ask questions that you might not ask on Twitter. You know what I'm saying? Like that kind of th that kind of friendship is like really special to me. And uh, it just takes a while. It takes it just takes a while, but I I feel like I'm kind of more in that place now, and it's been really really awesome. That's sweet. That's so. sweet. And you moved with uh, your girlfriend at the time, right? Yeah, my girlfriend at the time, my fiance now, and that was the other the other thing that was really weird was it was like it felt like we were moving for me because I'm in music, and so I was like so, but at the same time, it like you know she was in a transitional part of her life and. Now she's just got like a wicked job here and she's thriving probably more than me, to be honest. And so that's been truly the pleasure of my life. It's been so wonderful to watch and like for us to, you know, be here together and be in a place where we're both like we both have a space is really, really sweet. It's also just like nice to have somebody to go through something like that with you, right? Like especially a big move like that to really just have like that groundedness when you get home. A hundred percent. Yeah. Yeah, and there's definitely days where I've got home from whatever I'm doing here where I'm like so thankful that I have someone to just t just spew all my crap at cuz when when LA's great, it's so great, but when LA sucks, it just chews you up and stomps on your head and um so it's nice to just have someone that's just a rock for sure, yeah. So tell me about the great stuff. What's the great stuff about LA? What are the things you're enjoying the most? Um well, I think that the thing about LA that's so wonderful is like, <clears throat> I think a, a lot of the people that come here are searching for something. And I think that also breathes like bad things too. Like, I think there's a lot of people that are lost here and maybe um, sadly, like still searching and haven't found the thing. But I think a lot of what's happening as well is like, for some people, it's like when you're searching for something, like inevitably, the thing you're searching for isn't quite what you actually want or need like th there it's always a bit of a puzzle and i think that the people that are really insightful and and introspective like end up realizing that the thing that they're looking for is like inside them and so there's a lot of people that have grown like like are, have had so much personal growth that i've met here which has been really really um really nice i just feel like there's like a very open energy a very like um yeah, just like thoughtful people. I, I think that's been a really cool thing. And the weather's great and the surfing's great and all that. So you are you've gotten into the whole surfing vibe, like good old Canadian boys surfing in California oh, now? Sort of. So I the the second I got here, I bought a surfboard, I bought the rack, I did the whole the wetsuit, the whole thing. And then um <laughs> like just enough times of strap. I have a Fiat, which is like classic for me because I'm a tiny guy. And I was like, I'm going to buy a tiny car just to spite the world. And uh, like maybe the 10th time I strapped my giant surfboard to the top of my Fiat and drove 45 minutes to Venice Beach. I was like, I don't think this is for me. I just I'm just going to go to the beach next time and I'm going to bring some oranges and watch people surf. So, yeah, I get I get that. It's I get that. Fun. So fun. So, I mean, I, I didn't expect to go here, but you mentioned it. You know, you said, uh, you know, L.A. can knock you down at times, too. What are some of the what are some of the challenges? What are some of the struggles in L.A.? Ah, uh, man, I, it's I mean, I think that because like people are looking for something here, there's a lot of like fakeness here. Like there's a lot of people are it's just people people come to you with, with their song and their dance and they like there's this thing where you have to sell yourself so hard here which i think 
is cool. I think that's actually beautiful. Like it's so nice that there's so many creative people here just just constantly making art. I think that's part of why I moved here. But at the same time, it does breed this culture of like, I don't know. I don't know if I've articulated it properly yet, but just this. A little bit of a facade rather than actual. For sure. There's also, in the first week that I moved here, I went down, to, I had to go to this bank and like I get there and my phone, I didn't realize my phone was on like 20%. And I get to the bank and I'm like, hey, I'm here to see the bank people. And then the bank person was like, the bank people don't want to see you today. You have to have a meeting. And I was like, damn it. OK. And then I get out of the bank and I go to call an Uber. And right as I call this Uber, um, my I think my phone. Yeah, my phone died. I had to walk to get a charger at one point. I don't know. It was a whole thing. And then I get in this Uber and I'm like. I like ha- charge my phone back up and I had to call all these people. Cause it's like, I'm, I'm a week in, I'm like, don't know where I am. I'm trying to figure out all this banking stuff. And then I'm on the phone for like 45 minutes. And I'm like, I look at the window and I'm like, I I'm in like Venice beach right now, which is like the 45 minutes, the other direction of my house. So I'm like, dude, what's um, what's the deal? Why are you driving me to Venice beach? And he's like, are you Sarah? And I'm like, do I look like Sarah? And he, I'm like, He's like, oh, you're in the wrong Uber. So then I get out of the Uber. I get into, I call another Uber. I get in that Uber. And then I get home like an hour and 20 later. I'm so tired. And then I'm like, okay, I got to sort this banking stuff out. So I go to get my wallet and my wallet is gone. And I'm like, I've lost my wallet. And it turns out that I left my wallet in the Uber, but it was the Uber that it wasn't my Uber. So I have no way of calling this Uber. So I'm like a week into being in LA and I've lost my driver's license, all of my credit cards, my debit card, like all my receipts. Like it, it's, it was just- I do feel like that's like the most Los, moving to Los Angeles story you could Oh my have. God, dude. Yeah, it's, it was literally like ADHD kid moves to Los Angeles. What could go wrong? <laughs> What could go wrong? So the last time we talked was such an, you had a story that just like absolutely blew me out of the water, did not see it coming. You happened to um, accidentally stumble across a a fellow while you were on a canoe trip and helped save his life and then uh, took a selfie with one of the paramedics. Saved anybody (laughs) else recently? What's the, what's, you know, where you at? I I haven't saved any lives recently. Uh, Thankfully, I'm glad that, people are surviving life. Um, but yeah, that was truly so messed up, man. I, uh, I, uh, I think the, though, just the crazy, just as like for briefing, if anyone doesn't know the story, like just a brief explanation is I was on a canoe trip and me and my friends found a guy and he was dying of hypothermia. And we, uh, we like carried him out of the, 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 uh, I think we were in Killarney, uh, on a stretcher, but as we were running with the stretcher, we ran past like, uh, like eight kids and we ran past them and they just kind of like were looking at us. And as I zoomed past, I just heard one of them go, is that Scott Hellman? And then like disappeared into the, into the bush. And I haven't seen a human being in like, in like 10 days. Like these are the first people I've seen in 10 days. And I'm just like, can you guys maybe like help? Like, let's, let's go. And so then they helped. And then, yeah, it was just, it was truly (laughs) crazy, but it's gotta be kind of like flattering in that moment, it was, it was but flattering. also not the just, time that you want to accept that, you know? Yes. Yeah, I wasn't exactly. I wasn't like, I wasn't open to receive flatter at that point. Flatter was not an emotion I was like expecting to feel while I was, um, while I was like portaging a human being. So yeah. All right. Well, you know what? We are going to get to the music in a bit, but I do have to ask because we're, we're in the middle of summer here. <laughs> what are your summer vacay plans? You got anything, got anything going on this summer? Anything fun? Oh, you know what? I I just keep trying to get back to Toronto and and Canada in general. Like I know it's so it's so funny when my brother lives in the UK and every every time he has a vacation plan, he like comes to Toronto or he comes to visit me. And I'm like that's so lame, dude. Like go to Italy, go to Amsterdam, but it's just so hard like when you live where your family doesn't live. Just I just want to see my family and my friends. Um but I do want to do some, like, I want to explore California more. Like, I have never been in Yosemite. I've been to the Redwood once, but I think I really want to, like, do that. I really want to explore Cali and see what it has to offer because it makes you appreciate where you live. Like, it, it is such a beautiful state. So, yeah. You and your fiance, have you been able to do some travel there? My fiance goes to San Francisco a lot. She works for 
um, a company there. Uh, so she does that a lot, but we haven't done it together yet. And I just think it's, it's necessary. So it's time. I also really, really want to go to Berlin really badly. Cause I'm super, I got super into electronic music over the last six months to a year. I've actually been making quite a bit of it. Um, and I just think it's such an exciting place. Cause there's so there, there's like a really like burgeoning scene of electronic music there. So so can we expect some Scott Hellman EDM in the near future? I don't know. I I don't know. I don't think it would be under my name, but I am collaborating with some like producers and artists that I love. So um, I definitely feel like at some point I'll be a part of some electronic projects for sure. You'll just have to go under a, a, a pseudonym, you know? Yeah, I got to get those Kanye glasses from 2000 and, 2010. I'll keep my eye out for Scott Kelman. Really. Yes. You know? Under the wire. Uh, on the music note, because uh, obviously we we started playing Drive By not long ago. Uh, first off, I I really love this song in general, but then watching the music video, so much more there. Really a vulnerable, you know, piece of storytelling. That music video was really beautiful. Tell me a little bit about the decision to to tell the story of your life. Go into a little bit of addiction issues and your your relationship tell me about that the decision because that's that's a deep and and vulnerable it's not easy yeah yeah i just think i think the thing that's funny about music videos is like you sit down to make a video and i feel like usually i go like okay there's like the unexpected way we could do this which is not ne not necessarily wrong like sometimes you just need to make a music video and it's just got to be dope and that's kind of it but sometimes I go like, is there a way I could elevate this song with this video? Like, is there a way this video could make the song even more special? And I think because the song was about a time, and if if anyone that, that's listening hasn't seen it, they're, they're, part of the, the story of the song is that I wrote the song about uh, a time when me and my fiance had been broken up. So we met when we were 15, we broke up for four years, and then we got back together. So the song is very much about a time where we weren't together. And obviously now we're together, we're engaged, we're going to spend the rest of our lives together. But it, so I was like, how do I tell this story while still being like without reverting back to that place and still being me? And then I was like, OK, well, why don't I just tell the story of that time from my perspective now? <laughs> and then my video director, uh, Noah, who's part of this collective called Clark Street, who have been so amazing that I've just started working with, was like, OK, well, what's the story? And I explained the story to him and he's like, that's a really long story, man. Like, I don't know <laughs> how the F we're going to do that. And I was like, well, why don't we just do it? Like, why don't I just stand in front of all these places and we just tell the story with subtitles? And I had seen a video uh, a couple of years ago. I think it was it was Halsey and uh, Khalid. And it's a song called Eastside. And no. they I, I totally ripped that video off. I had like no like no shame. I totally stole that their idea. It's literally him standing in front of all these locations talking about his life and it's all in subtitles. But I think for me, um, I just feel like I had also always been circling that story throughout my career and been talking about me and my fiance's relationship, but also my relationship with drugs and alcohol and addiction and mental health and ADD and all that stuff. And I just wanted to be like, I just wanted to tell it out. I just wanted it to be like, not to be over. I'm super happy to continue to talk about it, but I just wanted to control the narrative and be like, this is what happened. Like, this is my life. Now it's so much easier to communicate about it. So it felt give just people, really cathartic. Give people like a, a more full picture. So when exactly. they can hear yeah. your music, they've got some context for what you're talking about. Exactly. Yeah. Oh, that's really cool. One of the things that I thought was neat about it is um, one of the, one of the locations you shot about in front of was, was it your parents' old house that's been purchased and renovated by somebody else? Yeah, yeah. So tell me about the conversation in going to chat with those folks and then filming and being like, hey, do you mind if I just film in front of your house, which used to be mine? Can I be totally honest with you? Please do. I didn't have that conversation. <laughs> I, <laughs> I rang the doorbell and I saw the lady in, in the house like working on her laptop, but she had headphones on, so she didn't come to the door. But I had already had a conversation i had already met them because i asked my fiance to marry me at their house okay uh, yeah i had gone there the summer before and been like hey uh can i ask my my girlfriend to marry you on your roof and they were like who the hell are you and i was like i used to live here and me and my fiance like 
when we were teenagers, we used to, my house, my, my bedroom had like, you could open the window and we'd go out on the roof and we'd like smoke and be stupid teenagers up there. And my parents hated it, but that's where like, I fell in love with her because like, I just realized she was such a free spirit because yeah. she, she didn't give any, she had no uh, worries about life. And um, so, yeah. So anyway, so I already had like a rapport with them. So I, I knew they wouldn't be mad, but uh I haven't heard anything from them since, so I think it's all good. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's one way of yeah. doing things. That's one way of yeah. doing things. I love it. Cool. Well, you've got a few new songs that have come out this year. Tell us a little bit about your music journey. Where are you at right now? What are we? What can we expect going forward? And then in addition to that, like, what are you kind of hoping to make? What's the direction you want to go with this stuff? I am... Um... I, the, to the first question, honestly, I just had been sitting on so many songs and I moved here and it was really stressful. And then like a lot of the people that I was working with got like let go or moved companies. And like, I just, I just ended up in a place where I was in LA. I had a, not really a team. I was just like really a little lost and I had all of this music. So right now I feel like I'm just in a place where I'm, uh, I feel just super free. Like there's songs that had lasted through that time. Like, um, like every time drive by and uh um uh but the first two like drive and back together were just new songs that I had written and I'm just kind of like going with my gut going with my heart just, just putting out music that like makes me feel things um and just kind of trying to put out music quickly it allows me to not like worry too much about like what happens to the songs like ultimately I think that the, I love all the songs enough that I know some of them will connect more than others. And I'm so happy for that to be the case. And uh, yeah, just going to continue to like explore. And I find the more that I do that, the more free I feel and the more um, uh, just connected I feel to the music, the more I just feel like it. I don't know. It just gets less like cerebral and like less worryable. It's all just kind of just a vibe. And and it's also more meaningful because it's more immediate. And then I have an interview like this and I can just talk about the music. And it's just I wrote it like three months ago rather than four years ago. So, um, yeah, I think that's kind of where I'm at. Uh, but, yeah, I have more music coming. Like there's there's I think there's three more singles coming. And then I, I what I'd like to do is put out an album. And maybe aggregate some of these songs into that album and maybe not some of them or whatever, and then put more new music on there. But just to be like, here's a body of work. This is where I'm at, I think would be really, really nice for me. Um, that's how I benchmark time as well. Like it just makes me, it's just helpful for me to just be like, boom, here's a record. Um, but yeah, the next three songs, one of them might switch. I don't know yet, but the next three songs are, I'm so excited for because they're, they're just I just I don't want to say too much because I I the element of surprise is always fun, but they're they're fun songs and they're really exciting songs. So um I can't wait to put them out. One of the things that's I think cool about art in general, I mean, you've got a, a good following. Any song that you put out will be somebody's favorite song. Somebody is gonna connect with that to to a deep level, and I think that's so neat, right? Like you have certain ones that probably pop off a little more than you expect a little bit more than the others, but every song you put Absolutely. out is going to be somebody's favorite. Totally. It's so crazy to think that. Um, I had a recently, I had a, um, I saw this show and if anybody uh, is interested in new music, I know that this artist is like planning things and putting things out. So I don't, I, I don't know what, like what is happening, but we became really close because I went to her show her name is um, Leah Pappas Kemp's, and she she's a Canadian artist. She's she's from she's from Toronto, but I I think she's personally like just based on the show that I saw, she's the most exciting artist that I've seen in a really long time. She's like nineteen, and the whole show I was just like, like I just couldn't believe it. And then we were talking, and I think she was a little familiar with my music. And I have this song that I loved, and I still love so deeply, but it didn't really connect that much. Like I don't know why. Maybe it was just a really big left turn for me as an artist. Like if people weren't expecting it, so they didn't really know how to like, yeah, receive it. Um, but the song's called "Afraid of America," and it's I, it's even more pressing to me now because I live in America. And we were like chatting and having drinks, and we were just talking about art and music. And I was so 
I was just profoundly like moved by how, as a 19 year old, how insightful she was and thoughtful she was. And then she was like, my favorite song of yours is a song called Afraid of America. And I was like, nobody has ever said that to me. Like that song just went up and just left. Nobody, everybody forgot about it. And I, I think that's so cool. Like how a song can like, I guess be a failure, but I mean, a million people could love Bungalow to like 70%, but that person might love that song to like 100%. And who's to say that that's not more important, you know? Well, it's art. I, I One of the things I love about it is it, it just isn't a failure, you know? Like in, yeah. in, com- in competition, you can lose. But if you make good stuff, you make good stuff, and it, it's not a failure. It's a win because you made it. Like that's that's my favorite thing about this. Is yeah. there going to be an opportunity for us to see you live in concert anytime soon i mean we're yeah, here in manitoba but you know I across the very, yeah i think really soon i uh i'm just like i just hadn't played in so long so i was just like focusing on putting out music and like settling in la but um well i'm just doing a couple more shows just around the city here and then uh we're just we're just working on logistics of like putting together a, a proper tour in canada and like really i just really want it to be right because i haven't played in canada in a while and i just want to give I just want to give people like just the best night of their life. You know, it's so it's such a privilege to do. And I've also been tattooing fans as well, which is something that's like new in my life. And like something I realized was like when you when you are a public person, you know, it's like there. I think that it's such a privilege to give people like like a part of you. And uh, I just want to like give it my all and really like just give people just such a sick night, you know? So I'm just really focusing on like making sure it's right rather than rushing it. Okay. Well, you know what? I, I should let you go, but you did, you did say we could do a podcast here. So I need to know what the weirdest thing you've tattooed on a fan was. Oh, that's a great question. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I see you've got some pretty awesome tattoos yourself. I'm covered. Yeah. I don't even know what I'm doing anymore. Um, <laughs> The weirdest thing I've tattooed on someone. It's always really weird for me to tattoo my lyrics on someone. That's really wild. Mm-hmm. Um, and then I had this one one girl who was so sweet, and I tattooed this massive like blue cactus on her ribs, and I felt that was just I felt so bad because that's so painful. <laughs> like color, colored ink takes so much longer to tattoo because it doesn't saturate as much. So it was like two hours of just like excruciating pain, and I that's. That's a level of tattooing I have like realized I do not like. Like if I think something's going to be painful, I don't want to do it because I don't want to inflict pain on you. Right. Right. You, you just got to spend a few hours inflicting pain on a fan of yours. There's nothing I love more than I start tattooing, especially when it's someone's first tattoo and they go, oh, oh, that's so like not painful. I'm like sick. That's so nice. I love that. Cool. Scott, th- a pleasure as always. I love yeah, chatting. You too. Thank you so much for chatting and, and giving us so much of your time here. Anytime. I loved it. And of course, we're looking forward to the new music and even some of the EDM. Yes. Yeah, the EDM, the new music, it's all coming. Love it. Yeah. Awesome. Thank you. Dude, thank you so much.